Well, if you watched the last video, you saw this greasy pile of garbage run away. And, uh, figured I'll tear it down, so. I've already got the blower off of it. It's on its way to Connecticut or Maryland or somewhere like that. But uh, anyway, I guess I'll climb underneath this suspended load and pull this oil pan off here first. That should give the safety pulley something to whine and cry about. And uh, so that'll be good. Let me get that done and I'll show you where I'm at. That'll work. I got up underneath this thing and pulled all those pan bolts out of there. And it didn't even fall and smash me to death. Can you believe that? So I guess I'll pull this suction tube and the oil pump off here. And then we'll set her down on some blocks. Pull one of these rod caps forward here. Bearings look pretty good, or that one does anyway. Of course that's the bottom it's going to. Crank looks good though. I think I'll just leave her hanging right here. That's working pretty good. Got the starter out of the way. Dragonfly there, he didn't make it. So, uh, this alternator off here, power steering pump, power steering reservoir, fuel filter base, and those fuel lines out of the way, and then we'll probably move around to the other side. Okay, I went ahead and got most of the hoses and stuff off of it. So this stuff right here came off and the blower came off. This is the water pump, so that spins around. There's an impeller in there. I'll try to get that apart and show you after a while, but. Those are those flyweights that spin around and do a bunch of crazy shit. I've told you about those before. So what you've got here, when the blower's on this thing, you've got this drive shaft coming out of here. It splines into the blower drive, which is in there. So that's spinning around and that's driving the blower. And then out of the front side of the blower, you've got this rig and it's splining into the blower on this side and the blower is actually driving this. It's spinning those flyweights around. And then in here, there's a collar that slides back and forth based on the speed of these flyweights or the speed that that shaft's turning. And what that collar is gonna do is push on this, these fingers right here so there's a shaft that goes up through here. Okay, I'll let it down a little bit so you can see this better. Um, so I'm moving these fingers here back and forth. You can see when I do that, there's a shaft that comes up through here, goes into the governor, like I said, and then that's working on the fuel rack, moving it back and forth. So that's how the engine senses, how the governor senses the engine speed and, and figures out whether it's needing to add fuel or take fuel away. I'm gonna pull this oil cooler set up off here now and probably try to get some of this stuff off the front and get this fan off here, fan hub, and see what it's gonna take to get this pulley and damper off. I may have to get my hydraulic puller out and pull something off there, I don't know yet, but. Either I'm getting ready to pull this off this crank with this piece of shit $12 puller, or uh, I'm getting ready to go to the ER, but one of the two is going to happen. That thing's bent pretty bad. I 
got a load on her, but she's moving. Yes. A bunch of these bolt holes were egged out and none of the bolts that were in it were tight. Like two or three of them had already fell out. So there's the front engine mount off there. And then there's the oil cooler. So you've got this, you've got this housing here. It goes over it like that. It runs coolant through that housing around the outside of this and then oil on the inside of it. There's the back side of the cooler where the oil goes in and comes out. Got all the air box covers off of it. So this is where the blower puts the air in right here through these two big holes. And the air box completely surrounds both sides of the block. And I mean the center of the block holds all the liners and the air box goes all the way around it. So you're actually looking all the way through from one side all the way out the other through the liner ports in number one cylinder right here. Got the air compressor off of it, it's buried down in there. Blower drive is right there. That's the air compressor drive right there. There's a little drive coupling right there that goes in between the compressor and this piece here. And then I've got the clutch dropped off of it too, so I'll probably pull this flywheel off next. And then we'll be about ready to set it on the ground and start pulling the front and rear housings off and then the head. All right, I think the rear housing's ready to come off. Blower drive's completely out. Okay, so these are counterweights, kind of an interesting deal. I'll bar it around here, you can watch them move, maybe. About ready to start pulling head bolts and see if we can get this head off here. She's in pretty tough shape. It doesn't hardly want to rotate right now. I'm, I'm betting these two cylinders right here are even worse. See if we can get it to rotate at all. It is 
is not happy. Pretty good size cracks in between valves here. She definitely got hot. Let me show you this water pump before I forget it. Little feller, ain't it? Here's number one. Let's pull a few more of these rods and pistons out. See what the rest of them look like. This is number two, it's even worse. Those rings are completely stuck on top. I got them all out of there. They're in pretty rough shape. There was no hope that it was ever gonna run again like this. Most of these rings are completely welded in there and these two rods are seized to the wrist pins. Bearings all look good though. Got a couple mains pulled. A little gouge in that one, but crank looks good. Let me see if I can give you a little injector demonstration. Should be able to hit the top of this with a hammer and make it spray. So I'll fill it up with WD-40 here. Maybe. Got her in the full fuel position there. I'll put you up underneath here so you can see what happens. Well, there's you a look at the guts of one of these ultra rare and super valuable two-stroke Detroits. These things are so rare and valuable that I've got like three more of them here and I don't even want them more to look for them. They just find their way here somehow. But all this junk's going to the scrap yard where it belongs and uh, There'll be 13 year old Chinese kids making new toasters out of it in no time. So I guess that's all I've got. Probably wasn't much of a video, but you get what you get, I guess. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.